going to do a little bit of a field vi a review of a, a tech sport camo tent. Now I know what you're saying, $20 tent, it really worth much. Well first I'm going to take it out show you all the components of it, then we're going to set it up, then I'm going to explain some of the flaws to it which I'm sure you already know. And then I'm going to show you actually why this is a really pretty decent emergency backup tent. So let's get started and throw, throw everything out on my blue tarp down here and take a look at the components. First comes in a really decent carrying case. They say the tent weighs uh, three and a half pounds. And actually I do believe them when they say that because it is pretty lightweight. Of course it comes with these tent poles. These are made of an aluminum. Now, they're cheaply made. Don't be surprised, eventually this tip is going to break. I'm sure there's no way around that. And there's a little trick to fix that, and I'll show you that later. The other thing, if you really wanted to, I'm absolutely positive you could put some uh, bungee cord in these to make them snap together, but I don't see use in it. Of course, it comes with the stakes, the ropes. Let's see what kind of stakes we got here. And these are metal stakes, and I guarantee you these are very light usage stakes. So if you're really going to use this tent, for a primary, primary shelter, I'd probably upgrade to some different stakes. Of course, you got all your little ropes and all the fasteners. And then you got your tent yourself, or tent itself. And of course, another really neat thing is they put the instructions on the inside how to set it up. Now, I'm pretty sure you know how to set this type of tent up, so we're not going to go through that. In fact, I'm going to cut those out when I get back to the cabin. So let's go ahead and sprawl the tent out and take a look at it. Now, they say you can set this tent up in under about three minutes, and actually I do believe them, because there's really not too much to this tent. The bottom of it is basically a polyurethane tarp same kind of tarp I've been sitting on for a year and haven't really poked any holes in it. Uh, so that way, that being said, I really don't think you're going to be needing a ground cloth for this particular tent. Of course, remember, $20, it's a throwaway. And they say it sleeps two people. I'm not too sure about that either. So I'm going to go ahead and stick the corners out of here and hopefully we're not on any rocks. doesn't look like it. Huh. Okay, that's impressive. <laughs> the stakes are a little bit more uh, sturdier than I thought they would be. impressed how well these little tabs are on here. I didn't think they would be that tight. Interesting. Now this, by all means, is not a freestanding tent. So you do have to stake it out before you put it up. ahead and set the front up first. Little heads up. Tent poles get a little bit warm in the sunlight. <laughs> but the reason I was kind of attracted to this tent is it reminds me of a Boy Scout tent I used to have back in the scouting program. And it's very similar to the tent I took to uh, Camp Philmont and hiked the Cimarron uh, I was in Cimarron, New Mexico and hiked the uh, mountains up there. Definitely going to have to do some modifications to this tent. Link, er, tent ropes a little bit later, but I'm not too worried about that now. Let's see, that'll... Yep, that'll work. Let's go grab the back one, shall we?
Okay, now that we got the uh, center poles on there, let's go ahead and put the side, little tabs on the side, pull the side supports out. Each one of the tabs, it's real simple. I'm just going to slide the rope on through there and uh, pull them out. The reason for that is to make the inside of the tent a little bit roomier. Get back here. Back here. Now, if I was actually going to sleep in the tent tonight, I would get a stick and put the stick here and put it down. Actually, it would lift this up a little bit higher because when you pull these out to the side, you don't really get a lot of height. They just make it just a little bit more roomier, but not a whole lot. But with the stick there, as you can see, it lifts it up a bit more and gives you a little bit more room on the inside. I learned that trick back in my scouting days. Now, of course, when I get back to the shop, I'm definitely going to do some modifications to the rope. Actually, I'm probably going to switch over to a little bit of a thicker rope. Okay, let's come around to the front and uh, kind of take a look at it. Now, we've actually got some stuff left over. Got two tent stakes left over. And, of course, the... Uh, these are little tighteners for the rope, but we're not going to use them because I'm going to go with something a little bit different. Let's go ahead and get all this stuff out of the way. Now basically, the outside is a non-breathable material. It's kind of like a uh, polyurethane tarp. So this tent does not breathe whatsoever. So if you want to stay nice and cool in it, you have to keep the flies open. You got one in the, or the uh, rain flaps open when you're sleeping. But I guarantee you the condensation is going to build up like you don't believe. And I know this from past experiences. But it's real simple. Isn't that interesting? I accidentally sewed the tie off onto the <laughs> to the mosquito netting. But it's got actually really heavy duty zippers on there, surprisingly. Let's just tie this up real quick. Ah, boy, it takes me back. Let's run around to the back side after I get this tied up and open up the back flap. Come on around here, let's do that real quick. A lot of people ask why is a fly, actually this out here, the uh, rain shield on the outside of a tent. Well, it's very simple. It's kind of a cheaply made tent, and this is the best way they can figure to keep the rain out of it, I'm sure. But it simply just ties up and the seal, it's got some little zippers here on the side. Not really that big of a deal. Okay, let's take a look at some of the flaws. First off, let's go take a look on the inside, shall we? Actually, it's a lot roomier than you think it is. Look at that working the ship we got. You're definitely, and I am not lying, definitely want to seam seal this tent because this thing is no way, shape, form, seam sealed at all. But that's not a big deal. I mean, I pretty much seam seal every tent I have high end to low end because I just want to, you know, there's a little window at the back. Uh, actually, huh, not too bad. It's a lot roomier in here. I think I'm almost six foot tall. Actually, it's kind of comfortable. Now I'm going to give you a heads up right away. What is this? <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. 
Looks like a factory. Uh oh. <laughs> okay, where was I? I'm gonna be straight up honest with you. And this tent is hotter than hell right now, and it's 80 degrees outside. I want to say it's probably about 90 in here. I'm kind of breaking a sweat. But they did reinforce each one of the side tabs, which I'm kind of impressed. And you're gonna definitely want to seam seal that too. Okay, let's go outside. And yes, it does have the bathtub style floor on there, which I do like that. Actually, oh no, it's still not a bad tent. It doesn't have a very good pitch on the roof. So I'm thinking in a heavy downpour, that's going to be a water collector. That's something that needs a little work. But I can figure that out. But remember, it's a $20 tent. You know, you can't really expect much from them. Now, another thing I would probably do, and I got this idea from Rainbow Hiker, is he sprayed his tent down with a silicone like Camp Dry. I think that really would, would be a really great idea. And a couple other things I like about this tent is if you lose a tent pole or break a tent pole, all you have to do is go out in the woods and cut you a stick. Boom, instant tent pole. On uh, some of the other tents, if you lose a tent pole and break a tent pole, you're pretty much screwed. Another thing is you can just tie this between two trees. And I kind of bought it more for a nostalgic reason, because this is not really going to be my main backpacking tent, because it just gets too hot. <laughs> yeah, I've had one when I was growing up, and I used someone similar to this. Of course, it was a little bit better quality to do a, a hike Mount Baldy and in a scouting program. But all in all, not a bad little backup tent because if you think about it you takes three mylar blankets to make a tent of this size and if you figure out the price and the, the tent price it evens out quite a bit so this has kind of been my review on the uh, camouflage trail tent i'm sure there'll be more to come on this because i'm really not done with the project i'm going to do a couple other things with it and maybe take it out sleep it in a couple nights but uh as always Thanks for watching.